Answers. Number one, I wanted to be far from the family because I wanted my independence. So number one, I knew that cognac was not going to be my path. Now, why perfume? I don't think I chose perfume. I think perfume chose me in a way. And when I was doing my thesis in the university at La Sorbonne, I did it on the semantics of scents. And um, when I started working on it, I knew immediately that that was going to be my path. Now, in the collection, it would have been a bit too cheesy, a bit too simple to do a perfume that would have a cognac smell. Um, nevertheless, I think that in all my scents, there is a woody, animalic, vanilla dry down that is very um, reminiscent of the smell of the wood barrels that contain the alcohol, the cognac. Uh, um, the, no, the inspiration for me comes uh, from music, from literature, from what is happening in the world at the moment. And the way I work is very closely to a movie director, if you want. First, I need to write the script, because I, I don't know if you know, you know this, but my collections are very narrative. You know, the, all the names are complicated, they have a title and a subtitle that echo one another to create the story, the emotion that I'm interested in. So first the name... And then when I have the name, I go see the perfumer, I express what I wanted to say with the name, what the emotion I want to carry with the perfume, and then we work together in order to express the emotion carried by the name. So the name first, the scent afterwards. I think Calice is one of the greatest perfumer uh, that exists. Um, you know, it's like for a lot of things, like a designer. I mean... Valentino is a great designer, Tom Ford is a great designer, Versace is a great designer, but maybe you are more, you're more at ease with the Valentino style than the Cavalli style. Same thing for, for me for perfume. There's a lot of great perfumers, but I like the style of Calice. I mean, now that we have worked for five years together, there is um, a close relationship. She knows what I like, she knows what I don't like, so things go faster in a way. And she's always curious, interested. There's a, I mean, we have created such a strong relationship that I'm always open to any new perfumers, but I would think that it's going to be difficult. But I have another perfumer. She's young. Her name is Sidonie Lanceseur. She's 28 years old, and she signed my, light, my latest perfume, Incense Oud. It's done with Sidonie. So it's not always Kelly's, but it's true that I really, I really love working with her. <laughs> um, uh, Incense Oud, actually, the last one, took me two years to create. It, I was supposed to launch it last year, uh, but I was not ready. And then we, at the same time, we worked on the Rose Oud. I was working on the Rose Oud with Kelly's, on the Incense Oud with Sidonie. But with Kelly's, it went really quickly, and the Rosewood was created in three months, where the Incense Oud took two years. So it really depends. The, the future one, um, which will be launched in September, has been done in a month. It's the fa I mean, the accord is very short, and we try to make it more complex, and each time we were trying to make it more complex, I didn't like it. I was going back to the original accord. So this one has gone super short. Or, but Love and Tears, or Back to Black, took one year. So you never know, you know. Sometimes you think that it's going to be super easy, like Love and Tears is a jasmine. And my, in my mind, I was like, jasmine is going to be so easy. It's the queen of flowers. Every perfumer has worked so many jasmine perfumes. I'm going to be do done in three months. And it took 14 months. I was super late when I launched it. I don't think that this collection is dec decadent. I think this collection is about, um, is about life. So um, Love Noir evolves around three chapters, you could say, like a book. There's one chapter that expresses love and all the steps in the love relationship, in a way, from the prelude to love, which is the beginning of a love relationship, to love and tears, when the relationship ends. So I don't think there's anything decadent, just life. There's one chapter that expresses um, artificial paradises or drugs, so, like a taste of heaven, absinthe verte, which was the liquor, the drug that the poets in the 19th century used to take. Straight to heaven, white crystal, 
and back to black aphrodisiac. I mean, an aphrodisiac is a drug, but it, like a pleasure drug. Um, and then, last chapter is the temptations with liaison dangereuse, cruel intentions, and the next, next um, perfume will be in the temptations. And temptations, are, um, it's not decadent, it's just human beings and what they want and the way they are in life. So for me, it's more about what uh, Balzac used to call a like comedy humaine, you know, life. Okay, so that actually is a good question. <laughs> um, I think that the brand is going to go more and more into expanding different categories, uh, but still doing luxury, but luxury accessories. In a way, I'm not interested in fashion. Fashion does not interest me. What interests me is to do beautiful accessories that are going to last a lifetime. That's what interests me. So we just launched in December evening bags, and we launched them exclusively at Bird of Goodman in New York, Harvey Nichols in London, and the Bon Marché in Paris. And we're going to expand in a few more stores this year. And after Evening Bag, we'll probably do another category. But always with the number one principle in mind is to do absolute quality, absolute luxury, and timeless. I want you, when you buy one of my bags, you can wear it today, you can wear it in six months, in three years. I want it to be always in style. Because style never gets out of fashion. I mean, perfume is my passion. So it is, absolutely. And then I have two kids from a first marriage. So it's time-consuming. The company is time-consuming. Um, so, and I have a new girlfriend. So, um, and the, the, the job, I mean, the company is really something that drives me uh, every day.